the box with uh, true alley viper fashion used a stiletto um, sorry YouTube if that was not allowed uh, truly I'm sorry uh, so let's go ahead and tip the camera down it's the toy is the star of the show right now adjust the setting a little bit there we go so pulling it out nothing in the box but we have this tray full of parts very nice new old stock comes with five wheels or five tires whichever you want to call them decals and the instruction sheets oh let's see on these tires actually has a uh, serial number on them that reads uh, GBDK by 285 so that's kind of cool so let's go ahead and look at what's going on here snatch up a pair of tweezers They're always right where I don't need them at the moment, but when I do need them, they're not there. Oh, very frustrating. So, we'll use the hemostat instead. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at these instructions. Um, I'm going to need something to cut with. Sorry that I didn't have my materials all together right at first. Okay. Nice pair of scissors right there. All right. Rear axle assembly. So this is the rear axle. I'll take a look at the details on that. Pretty good. So these, I guess, are what are called the ribs. Turn vehicle over, align axle slots with vehicle ribs, and snap back axle tab into place, snap front axle tab into place. Okay. So... Makes sense, there's the bumper. It's kind of a hard plastic. It's not the soft plastic like the um, P40 Warhawk was. Okay, there's a little tab I had to slip in there. So yeah, that the Warhawk was a fun build. I enjoyed that one. Okay, so snap the tires into axle posts they fit onto these little mushroom pegs that's what the axle looks like when you're putting it into place make sure the bumper is sticking out has foot pegs on it um, so snap these in and once these are on um, I just made a liar out of myself. I was going to say, once they're on, they're on. But this one slipped right off real easy. So that's kind of cool. Uh, when my brother and I were kids and we would play with our cars, uh, remember those trucks that you would turn the little key on the rim and you could pull the tires off and change them, you know, pretend like you're in a 
workshop. Well, we used to loosen the tires and push the trucks down the driveway and see if the tires would fly off and make them wreck. So that was pretty, pretty fun. Um, your fifth tire is your spare. It goes right on the post there. That was my brother Eric that um, we used to do that. He's a car guy. Oh, really into Hot Wheels and stuff like that. I had a few Hot Wheels, but I never really got seriously into it. Okay, so hood assembly. Um, we have some antennas right here. So those get snapped into these holes for the antenna. Those also are on a mushroom peg. Um, I was at Target today looking for some classifieds. Um, did not find any at this particular Target. But uh, I went to the back where in their video section where they have all their Funko Pops. I was looking for some stuff for my daughter. And uh, she, um, I found some little spruce nips. Well, those things were like 12 bucks each. It's like, no way. <laughs> you know, I have a nice sharp pair of surgical scissors. Uh, like, so anyway, antenna snaps right into this hole on the hood. See, it has this, has the mushroom peg. But these scissors were actually used for wound care. I had bought a wound care tray off of eBay or off um, from Amazon. And these are sharp enough to cut away dead flesh. So, yeah, lovely story to tell. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so also steering wheel right here on the sprue. Yeah. So I'm sprueing around here. Steering wheel goes onto the post. This is another commonly missing accessory um, in true G.I. Joe fashion. Okay, so that turns. Um, and I'll tell you what things do come up missing. Uh, okay, the next is uh, the windshield. This is another piece that's commonly missing as well. Is it snaps right into these posts right here on both sides. Uh, this is a Willys Jeep that came about uh, during World War II. Uh, it's your first ATV. See the window folds down. Uh, and as it, the story goes, the military didn't quite know how to or what to name this vehicle. Uh, they were throwing all kinds of different names around. And Popeye... It was a very popular cartoon at the time. And you know that little magical creature that he has, um, Eugene Jeep? Um, since this was very, a foreign vehicle, they didn't really, well, it wasn't foreign. We built it, but they hadn't seen it before. So the um, soldiers affectionately called it a Jeep. And that's how the term came about. To the best of my understanding, I've had other people challenge that. But uh, I heard that on the History Channel and documentary. So I am going to believe the History Channel first. Okay, so number five, machine gun ammo box. This is another piece right here that you will find missing. Uh, so it says snap machine gun pivot oh the machine gun let's do that first um machine gun 
right here. And this is the pivot. The machine gun is a, another one that is missing. Um, I, I see a lot of these for sale. Um, and naturally the pieces that are easily that easily come off um, are missing. You know, kids are uh, watch my nephew and niece play masters of universe figures that i had given them and all these years that i had i never took king randor's crown off and they do they play with it and just start taking the parts off and it's like how i've never done that as a kid i always kept the parts on so that's why a lot of my stuff was complete and it just surprised me seeing that uh, okay so cutting the machine gun off And this piece right here in the back snaps right into the post here. This is a soft plastic, so you will for something that's <laughs> okay. Get in there, you bugger. All right. So the machine gun right here on the side, the operator could, or the passenger could operate the machine gun. Um, look how close it is to the tire. <laughs> no bueno. Okay. That's how important that was. I had to say in Spanish. Okay. Um, Hood assembly continued, but this the hood was already put on, interestingly enough, but it had the instructions right here to snap the hood into the frame. Uh, okay, so ammo box. Let's go ahead and cut this out. And Go about the bit your business. All right, and the, the lid snaps right into place. Cool play feature. I didn't know that it had the ammo box. It snaps right into this bracket back here, this little hole. Well, it doesn't snap, it just slides in there. So it's an accessory you could take out and play with. Um, so anyway um plus it's this oh this is for this piece right here is are the missile launcher turret halves it's a 90s toy so you're going to have a missile launcher and um, i've said this many many times if i would have had these missile launchers as a kid i would have been playing with the missile launcher more than the action figure what i really would have done was wind up all my action figures and use the missile launchers to shoot them down um, i used rubber bands and any little toy gun that fired ammo i would play with um, Remember those little space-looking guns that shot the plastic discs that you load them into to the side and you shoot it in the discs? That was, I had one of those, and that was my favorite gun. You could put like 10 or 15 of those little discs in there. Uh, so I would put my Joes in a box, you know, have them facing forward, and I'd be shooting the discs inside the box, and they'd be ricocheting around, knocking the Joes down. Uh, if they fell on their face, they were dead. If they fell on their back, they were wounded. Okay, so these two pieces, there's a female and a male end. And you snap those two together. Voila. Um, so the wounded ones, I would stand them back up and I would shoot them all down again until you had the last man standing. And of course, he was the winner. Okay, so the post back here this little peg snaps right in there and that 
will not come out. So that's how I kept myself entertained. Is there anything left on this sprue? It doesn't look like it. Well, sprue to you two. Okay. Um, so, missile launcher turret posts. Uh, missile launcher. You see this? That part right here. Snaps right in, rotate it, bam. Side view, rear view, front view, and how view do you do? Okay, so enough with the puns. They're not punny after a while. So, anyway, um, was pretty nice outside it's overcast a bit humid uh, we got rain uh, the Grand Canyon had to be evacuated uh, because of all the flooding uh, there's a waterfall at the base of the canyon I don't know if you guys have any of you been to that waterfall uh, I think it's called Havasu Falls uh, very long and uh, arduous hike down there but once you get down there the falls are absolutely beautiful but um, the rain just flooded that area we've been in a 26 year drought so our soil's real tough all right so you snap your triple missile that's what it's called right into the missile launcher um, these sell for about a buck 99 that's your average price for missiles um, so anyway, the falls, which normally run the very beautiful blue color, so that's how they look, uh, are now running mud, uh, because of all the dirt, of course, but, uh, we had a lot of forest fire, so there's burn scars and there's no plants to help absorb some of that water, so it, it uh, Got pretty treacherous up there. So to fire the missile, you just activate these levers right here, and boom, they fire. So here comes the nice sticker assembly part. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see what we got going. So we have a big star right here. Very synonymous for the U.S. Army during the World War II period. And that goes right in the middle of the Jeep. The biggest point so you see right here, that point is a little bit bigger than the rest of them. So that one goes upwards. All right. So these stickers right here that have the lettering, um, those go right along the edge of the hood. I wish the hood worked, that you could lift it up and see some nice engine detail in there, but que sera, sera. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap these, not snap them, but place it right there. Take the other and place it on the other side. But yeah, uh, it, it's funny out here, um, when it rains, people forget how to drive. Uh, there's just some, some chemical, I guess, that gets released in our brain 
we see water just like every other creature out in the desert get really excited and people just forget how to drive they're still speeding um, you know you can hydroplane real easy uh, some people try to drive through a flash flood which we have out here was called a, a stupid motorist law so that it's a crime to drive through a flash flood because you have to get rescued a lot of times and um, you get a big fine you have to pay for the rescue so this grizzly the name of the Jeep is the grizzly um, it's a the SS-1, the Grizzly SS-1 for Sergeant Savage. So the picture of the Grizzly um, goes right on the side. Right up there underneath the window. Uh, grizzly Jeep, that is a good name for it. When I saw this in the I bought one in a, a thrift store a few years back for like 75 cents. I saw it and it just tickled my memory. It's like, this, is, this doesn't look like a, anything ordinary. So there's the grizzly. And I saw the grizzly and said, like, what? I can't quite remember, but I grabbed it because the G.I. Joe stickers were peeled off. So I said, I'm just going to go ahead and buy this. Uh, and I am glad I did because it was a G.I. Joe Jeep. So, right here, there's one that says MSG RS Savage. That's not monosodium glutamate. That is Master Sergeant. And that goes onto the back right in that area there so sergeant savage frozen and was resurrected he was defrosted and was not given a commission still a sergeant he should have been made a colonel or something you know for being frozen put it on a little crooked but that's okay um yeah, so, you know, poor Savage, you know, he's frozen, and then he gets woken up, and he's like, holy crap, what's this? You know, um, so this one that says G.I. Joe, Sergeant Savage, it goes right along the side of the hood. Um. So yeah, Captain America, you know, they borrowed that concept. And that's that's fine because you know, Joe Kubrick you know, was a comic book guy, so why not? Oh, we got to get it over the post here. Peel stick, peel stick, peel stick. Bugger. Um, yeah, that is being a tough one. Oh, so the other, other day um, at work, I ordered DoorDash. And... Um, that's how the sticker goes. And we're next door to another hospital. So um, sometimes people that aren't familiar with how things are set up, they will deliver um, our food to well, the main hospital. Uh, bugger I just tore the sticker um, so that's what happened I write down the instructions uh, deliver to specific door call and hand to the purchaser you know so there you go and um, 
So this guy shows up and says, I dropped off your food at the security desk. And I said, how did you get in? The front door is locked. Oh, they let me in. Nobody has the key after hours to unlock the front door unless you're in management. We have a, an emergency door uh, for uh, ambulances and everything to drop patients off. So he got very aggressive with me and uh, was calling me a liar and saying, I'm doing this just to get free food, blah, 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 blah. So um, being a very patient individual, I just told him, I said, no, sir, I'm sorry, you are wrong. Uh, you, you didn't deliver it to the right place. And he got really upset with me and started arguing. So the um, speedometer goes right over the steering wheel, which I probably should have put this on before the steering wheel. Um, so needless to say, I didn't get my food. And I got a lecture for allegedly giving him the wrong address. And so, you know, you could talk to customer service via text. And I was talking to them and telling them the whole situation and what the driver said. And of course, they, they refunded my money. Um, but I told them this is going to be a while before I order from you guys again. So it happens. I mean, these are mistakes, but the driver shouldn't have been doing that. So these stickers right here go right here on the, the missile launcher. I mean, I, I was really hungry. I, I had brought my lunch as our cafeteria is closed at night. As some hospitals do, they don't run a cafeteria 24-7, so the night shift kind of gets buggered. But we are allowed to leave for food if you have somebody to cover you. So that's what the stickers would look like. But I was the only RT, so I could not leave. Because um, the nurses don't know how to run the ventilators. They're not trained in them. They get very basic training in school, but that's that's it. Okay, so these stickers right here go right up on the dash here. So I normally order or bring my lunch or order DoorDash. And um, so I had eaten what I had brought and I was still hungry. I burn a lot of calories at work. And uh, so, yeah, it just, it just made me a little grouchy. That was all. Uh, of course, part of me was wanting to you know, chew the guy out, but, you know, I do my best to be a very kind person. So... I, I just let it let it be man roll with it okay headlights go right here these are your headlight stickers and it looks like the green part uh, points up so you know I just let it slide and told them you know it'll be a while before I order again because that behavior is just unacceptable in a customer service industry so um, a couple nights later we had management show up from our corporate office just to check up on us which they do every once in a while which is nice and they ask what we need um, what they could do to improve things which surprisingly they listen and that is amazing because normally you just get chin music you know a little little, little bit of lip service um, but they actually listen to us so uh, that was pretty cool and lo and behold uh, 
they show up with Taco Bell. That's what I ordered the other night and didn't get. They had the big 10 pack, you had the five burritos and five tacos. And uh, the manager said, I'll make sure everybody gets a burrito and a taco. And joking, I said, oh, this is just a snack. I said, I could eat all this by myself. And he said, no, no, you can't. <laughs> and a few of my coworkers said, oh, yes, he can. We've seen him do it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I ironically was going to order, but it, it never showed up. Okay, so the American flag and this one that says G.I. Joe Grizzly, they go here on the pegs on the antenna. So the American flag goes on the driver's side. And this reminds me of the Green Army men that we used to get in a bag. And remember, they came with a a wooden flagpole and a base that you put in and attach the flag to it. Um, that was pretty cool. That, it's funny how that sparked that memory. And this sticker goes on the other one. But I I remember getting a bag of army men that came with a tank, and I thought I, that was the dog's bollocks. Um, loved having those tanks. So there you go, guys. A complete Sergeant Savage Grizzly Jeep, the SS-1. It's little foot pegs in the back for some dudes to stand on. Of course, you have a passenger and a driver. Four figures could fit in these. The foot pegs, um, actually, do I have, I don't have a vintage figure within reach. Um, I wouldn't try putting a vintage figure on these. These foot pegs look a little too, um, too thick. But there you have it, guys. Sergeant Savage Jeep. I hope you enjoyed this toy build. I love doing these. Um, I think this is the last toy I have that's boxed right now to do a build. So uh, it'll be, be a while before we get another one. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to all my new subscribers. And if you like this video, hey, why don't you, you know, hit that subscribe button. Everybody who subscribes has a chance to win a prize, which I will be holding a giveaway when I reach 700. Um, I, yes, I do give away good prizes. Just look at my other videos, um, the, the giveaways. So, yes, uh, share this video with your friends. Let's get the word out there about this channel. Um, the more growth it gets, the more... Um, chances you have to win prizes so anyway guys thank you so much once again for tuning in remember the triple s safety sanitized six feet um the delta virus uh, the delta variant the coronavirus is out there and um some people that have been vaccinated are getting sick from it and um but those people were immune compromised as it was. So just to be safe, wear your masks, wash your hands, keep social distancing. California has already implemented the uh, mask um, standard again. So um, it, it's out there, guys. We're, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, you know, just the important thing is talking to your doctor, staying healthy. Um, get the vaccine as it will help protect you. Um, but um, the main thing, you know, just stay healthy, get sleep, drink plenty of water. Uh, that helps clean your system out. Uh, sleep cleans your brain out, helps. Uh, it does. It cleans stuff out of your brain, toxins and stuff that build up. Um, so, you guys, I want to see you around for many years to come. So, 
uh, take care, stay safe out there. Remember, be kind to everyone, especially be kind to animals. They know nothing but unconditional love. So this is Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off for now. You guys take care. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.